Hi everyone, this is Manuel and today I want to show you how you can create a visibility kind of uh, effect like in Teleglitch or the game I'm working on in God of War and in 3D. So we can um, start with a new project and we can uh, right away create a scene. This will be our main scene that we will use to test our, our um, effect so we can uh, assign it as the main scene so it's easy to run and we can create a new scene this will be the camera um, the scene will be we can just name it camera and the root just the camera so we change the type to uh, camera 3d and what we want to do is we want to and check all the uh, layers in the call mask except the first one. So the first layer will be used to render the normal scene, whereas another layer, I will choose the last layer, will be used to render the occluders and some omni lights and shadows that will represent uh, the visibility. So we add a sub viewport. Let's call it visibility sub viewport. This will render the uh, visibility layer. And then we add another camera. And we want this camera to be at the exact same position as this one. So what we do is we add a script. Let's call it camera. Let's grab uh, the, let's call it visibility camera which is a camera 3D, like these types. Um, and then what we do is we, in the process method, we update the global transform of the visibility camera from the root camera. Um, and that's it. So we want this to only render the layer where we compute the visibility. So we uncheck everything except uh, that layer. And then uh, we want uh, this viewport to be the exact same size of the and let me increase the size of the font. So we want um, this viewport to be the exact same size of the root viewport. So we call this visibility viewport. It's a sub viewport. And it's a visibility sub viewport. Okay. To do that, uh, we can create a method which I will call sync viewport size. And here we take the size of the root viewport and we copy it over to the visibility viewport. And we do this. When we load the scene with the camera, or we add the camera, and we also want to do this whenever uh, the root viewport changes size. So we do use the size changed signal and we connect it to the method we just created. Now, uh, we also want the visibility camera field of view to be exactly the same as the one of the root camera. So we copy that over as well. So we allow this to change. And this will um, render the lights that will allow us to calculate a mask that will hide 
the parts of the scene that are not visible from uh, Omni lights in the last layer. Uh, we need to make sure that the scene will render black uh, if it's not lit by any Omni light. So we create a new environment attached to this camera. And the clear color, we, we set um, custom color for the background to black ambient light disabled. Um, now we need a second uh, sub viewport, which I will call visibility mask sub viewport, just like the other one, we want this one to have the same size of the root viewport. here and what we do is we use a texture rect uh, which we add um, viewport texture uh, from this viewport and this will render the output of this viewport and we want want to make uh, the pixels, pixels that are lit by any omni light we want to make them invisible so what we do is we add the material a canvas material we we convert to a shader material so we quickly have a shader we can work with and we write this fragment so if the color we can check any component, it really doesn't matter because we will use white omni lights. It's not zero. We discard the fragment. Otherwise, we set the fragment RGB value to whatever RGB value we want as a color for the parts of the scenes that are not uh, visible. And I will use um, black. So at zero vector. We also want this to have a transparent background. We want this to use its own world because we want this to only be rendered in this viewport and we don't need the 3D so we will disable it. Uh, we need another node here and that's a mesh instance. This will, use, will be used to um, occlude the pixels we don't want and we want this to be um, We want this to be a quad mesh and have a material. We want this material to be uh, use alpha CISO and we want it to be unshaded. And we want also, um, we want it to use a viewport texture, which this has to be made local to the scene, but we want this to use a viewport texture and we will use the output from this. Uh, now, this has to be in front of the camera because it has to include the pixels we don't want. So we will put it at an offset, small offset, let's say 0, 5. And we want this to be covering exactly the field of view of the camera. To do this, I will use a script, um, which we'll call screen image instance. The script will assume that the parent is a camera. And then what we do is we adjust in the process function the scale um, by using the field of view and the aspect ratio so of the cam. Um, of the viewport, so the field of view of the camera. Um, and then aspect ratio is um, the viewport dot size x is temporary variable for the size. 
Let me check the size. So this would be plot default size dot x divided by default size dot y. The height. Um, we can use types. And the height will be given by this formula. So it will be tangent uh, of the field of view times uh, 2 times the distance. In this case, the distance is 0 0.5, uh, which means we just take the tangent. And then we have width should be equal to just like time aspect ratio and this will be used in the transform but when the basis we uh, use a scaled basis we scale by vector that uses those numbers and this should uh, allow us to have the mesh always in place we can turn this into a tool script which should allow us to see it working in the editor you might need to the okay um seems Okay, tangent of field of view. Well, not quite sure why. Okay, now it seems it's the correct one. So it has to be tangent by two. Okay, great. Now we can uh, try and add the camera to our uh, test scene. Let's move it on top. We want to make the camera script uh, tool as well, so we can see the other camera should move, yeah, to the same position. And then we add a mesh instance to uh, with um, with a plain mesh, a bit large one as a floor then we will use a cap uh, mesh instance with a capsule which will simulate our character assuming we want the visibility to be from our character these are, have to be um, so the floor has to be also on the last layer because we want it to be um, late By the lights that represent visibility so let's move this higher okay uh, let's add omni light this will be here under the carter node and this will only affect the layer where we compute the visibility so now we should see everything. Yeah, we see the um, the Omni light affecting the visibility, but we need to add another Omni light or you know, a spotlight or another light so that we can see if everything works. Yes. So this is the character. Now to show you. How these can create shadows well occlusion we enable shadows for this one and add some walls I will use a CSG box be quicker and we have to make sure this is also in the last layer and as you can see um, we can't see behind the wall but even if we move 
the other only light behind will see can see anything because uh, we have the mask render in front uh, make sure you don't have any emissive materials uh, as occluders if you do have emissive materials in your scene copy the meshes over and uh, assign an, a different material uh, make sure you don't have transparent uh, material as occluders um, those should be in a different in the normal layer only um, well um, that's it um, if you like um, this kind of content please uh, like the video and subscribe that helps a lot um, see you uh, next time